so, so we're, we're, we're obviously, you know, COVID sucks and we're all doing different things other than using your artistic outlet and going on Twitch and YouTube. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? You know, what, what keeps your juices flowing? What, what do you find exciting and enticing? I mean, I don't know. I don't really don't do enough. I mean, I play video games. Uh, I, you know, I fucking watch a ton of TV. Uh, me and my uh, fiance right now, we're watching, we're watching Fargo because we watched the fourth season as it aired. She had never seen, she'd seen the movie, but she hadn't seen any of the TV show Fargo. Mm-hmm. You guys watch Fargo, by the way? The first two seasons, my wife and I liked, and then we mm-hmm. stopped. We trailed off the last season. We didn't watch. Um, season four is fantastic. Season three is the worst season. Okay. Well, give season four a chance. I will tell you, it's not the best season um chris rock's a little miscast uh his performance is a little flat yeah um, it always although, is in his movies it always is yeah he's not a great actor but no. after a couple episodes with him he starts to the character just kind of is him mm-hmm. it's just oh you got to accept that this character is just chris rock talking like chris rock always talks you know he's and uh and but there's um actress um i do a great what? chris rock by the way sorry yeah <laughs> Oof. Josh hates my chris rock. let's never hear it <laughs> yes, please. please never show me your why chris i rock. hate it <laughs> it's it's 2020 it's no longer yeah. okay for white <laughs> people not to acceptable. do chris rock um, no, that, i'm going back to the bigger and better uh the bigger and better album <laughs> yeah, okay cool um whatever, go ahead it's not funny um, uh, which one? Oh, yeah, Chris yeah, Rock so he... doesn't even do a great Chris Rock, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Jesse Buckley, there's this actress, Jesse Buckley, who was also in the Netflix movie. I'm thinking of ending things this year. She's a fantastic actress. She's in the fourth season and she plays this Minnesota nurse named Oriana Mayflower, mm-hmm. uh, who is a, a mild spoiler. She is a, she is a serial killer. A... Okay. Which you find this out in the first episode. So it's okay, like good. not like a, yeah. you know, it's not like a mid-season reveal. Um, but her performance is electric. It's so dynamic. Every minute she's on screen, she's just incredible. Especially she has a bunch of scenes with Jason Schwartzman in the uh, fourth I season. I like him. And she's fantastic. Yeah, um, I'll tell you what though, Shushi, it's no Ozark, okay? So don't alienate our listeners, please. I like Ozark. <laughs> um, overall, I think I consider Fargo the better show, but uh, no. the third season especially. Fucking Third season Ozark. of Ozark especially is fantastic. Adam, have you even seen? You haven't seen Ozark. I, I mean, um, no, Fargo, right? Wait, no, you haven't, haven't seen Fargo? Well, then go fuck yourself. Have you even Ozark. seen the movie Fargo? Yes, I've seen the movie. It's a great movie. I've seen it it's more great. than once. Was Martin Freeman the first season? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Freeman. but Ozark is in a league of its own. It sounds like it's similar. There's, I mean, because the movie, you know, the murder and mystery sound like. Kidding? Nah. It's similar it's way Ozark. More... Here's the thing. I would say that the first season of Ozark has great moments, but is overall okay. There's some oh. kind of stupid, cartoony shit that I think, in my opinion, held it back. Season two, I would say, is a good season. If not, you know, it's it's always been a little cartoony for me. Um, season really? three is what I would classify as a great season of television where even when it's cartoony, it all kind of feels of a piece and it kind of feels, and especially, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, but the moment that they end the third season mm-hmm. on, that last, oh, yeah. that last like oh, minute yeah. is just like, whoa, right. fuck, you don't see that you know? coming. You yeah. do not see that coming at all. No. And then they play my favorite Run the Jewel song of the year. So they play Ooh La La. And I was yeah, like, definitely. You, that was the first time I heard that t- t- song too. You know, there was, was like, some oh, hip hop writers and, and producers in that show because there's a lot of hip hop references. It was nice to see actually. For sure. Yeah. So. But yeah, so yeah. yeah, anyway, so we're watching Fargo and I'm making her, so we watched the movie again and then now I'm making her watch the first season with me and we're like mm-hmm. seven episodes in. But we've watched so much Fargo in the last like two weeks that now like we're just, we're just doing the accent now. Like anytime we're just, <laughs> we're just walking around the house and we're, and we're doing the accent, you know, and she'd be like, ah, oh, do you want to make the uh, Hawaiian pizza tonight? And I'm like, oh, you betcha. Uh, you betcha. I think I'm going to play some Hyrule Warriors into Calamity for about an hour or so. I'm like, oh Yeah. <laughs> You do that, fella. You know, like, I like that just... North Dakota, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nice. well, that's what happens. You get you get inundated when you when you really binge the shit out of a show. Like it mm-hmm. it it becomes all encompassing. So yeah. you know. And the cool thing about Fargo <laughs> is I can actually do the accent. It's like literally literally the one accent I can do because I can't even do a Boston accent. And I grew up in New England. Like ah, Harvard Yard kid. Like I, it, you. Hey, you I heard your peaky, bi- your, your peaky binders. 
little oh. bit. We'd... <laughs> oh, you watched that? I did. I Peaky did. Blinders. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Peaky Blinders. I am. <laughs> that so show kudos. I had to give up on. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't put up with that show. That show. Was, Agreed. Agreed. You know, that show annoyed me. Peaky Blinders annoyed me because uh, I felt like there was just too much, like. Uh oh, the Peaky Blinders crew, crew, they're uh they're about to get fucked yep. over, but then there would just be a scene where they're like, Turns out we were awesome all along. Right. And then they yeah. go and explain to you like all this awesome <laughs> shit. It's like you could have just showed us them doing that shit. You it's know? like the A team <laughs> at the end, like I love it when a plan comes together. It always works yeah. out for them, you know? <laughs> yeah. I love that line. <laughs> It's just, you know, it's somebody who like fancies himself a writer. It's like, that's not how you write. You don't just, you don't just have a character, make it look like a character's fuck. And then, and then all of a sudden the character's like, yeah, well I did this, these eight fucking things off camera and now you're fucked, right. you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, I'll tell you what, um, Adam, um, what do you got to say, fuck? Cause I started, oh, you I, started to open your mouth. I did. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I was thinking back earlier in the conversation, you know, when you were doing the stand up side in, in mm -hmm. Boston and, and wherever else, mm -hmm. did you ever come across any like famous like comedians or actors and shit that you ever engaged with? Or was that something that never came about? I knew multiple people that became famous. Like, Lay it on us. Um, like my friend Sam Jay just released a special on Netflix uh, back in September. Do you know who Sam Jay is? I don't, but if he was on Netflix, it's probably She's, pretty good. Um, she it's a uh, her special is called three in the morning she's a black lesbian um and her her special is fantastic uh, the second half especially the first half is good but it, it kind of takes some time to really like come into it but the second half has some amazing shit in it she has a whole cool. um she has a whole uh bit about how she hates what's the name of the uh the the climate change girl the girl who made a oh Greta. the the, look, the young girl there Greta, what's her name? Oh, I can't. I don't know. Dude, I smoke too Is much. Is it meat. Wilcox? <laughs> no. Um, but uh, she she really fucking you know puts that little girl on blast, which is hilarious. <laughs> that, she has a uh, that's worthwhile right there. She has like a she has a whole bit about how she's like she's like the moment that I knew I was you know I was uh, done with the Me Too mo movement was uh, when the Aziza story and the Aziz Ansari story came out. Yeah. Because I was like, bitch, you couldn't take a season. Sorry, <laughs> you couldn't take a four foot nine Indian man. <laughs> I don't know, that guy, you could have bit him in half, you know. <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, I mean, obviously, but here's the thing: because she says these things that are going to be controversial, but because she's a black lesbian, she has, you know, she has like that shield, she's got the leeway, you know? right? Yeah. You know, in 2020, she's got like fucking super armor, man. And uh... <laughs> did she leave Boston to become famous? She Is left she Boston. So I met her about a year into me doing stand up. I met her. And then actually, we were, you know, and we still talked about it because her and I, like, like three, two or three days after her special came out, she called me and we had like a whole 45 minute, oh, nice. to an hour long conversation about it or where we talked and we were kind of reminisced, you know, it's like, because I met her when I was here and doing comedy and she was just starting. And we were both on a show in, in Dorchester at a black club and where we both bombed but i knew and i and to this day i i maintain i knew from that moment when i watched her that she had i it. was like that no that is this crowd sucks because they didn't laugh at me obviously they suck you know and <laughs> uh, like obviously these people have bad taste but they're not laughing on either of us you know yeah. and uh but i just knew she had just like the soul of patrice o'neill in her and I don't say that uh, lightly. It's not, yeah. it's not something I say about a lot of people or actually mm -hmm. anybody but her, um, where she had that kind of, that natural gift where just the way her brain works is funny, you know? And mm. then, and then like, you know, I started putting her on every show. I went around, just introduced her to everybody. And then, and then all of a sudden she just picked the fuck up and then she just leveled up way past me. And then, you know, and then was quickly top dog in Boston and then moved to LA with a deal was, you know, quickly doing shit for Comedy Central, appearing on shit. Mm. Uh, she did um, Kumail Nanjiani's comic book show and she was on that. And I think she had like a Comedy Central Presents. And then she got a job writing for SNL and she's currently oh. a writer on SNL. No kidding. Jeez, that's yeah. sick. 
That's awesome. Yeah, and then she was like telling me like stories like, oh yeah, you know the shoes that I wore in the latest in, in the special, like Lauren Michaels bought me those shoes for my birthday and shit, dude. You know, and it's just like wow. crazy, you know. And you She's know, like, get your ass out shit. of here, get off your ass and come out here. <laughs> Not and the kidding. best part is, is that she still, <laughs> she still is mad about motherfuckers in Boston. It's so funny because we can still talk shit about the comics we don't like in Boston. It's, <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> You're not too big to still step on the small people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the people, I mean, it's mainly in her mind, the people that when she was coming up, the people that like fucked over. Well, we're just would not kind of acknowledge her as somebody who is good mm -hmm. and somebody who is worth it. And now, and now that she's, you know, now is she is 5,000 times, you mm -hmm. know, the level they're at, you know, like, just like, ha, fuck you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, Oh, how's it? How do you like not being on TV ever, bitch? You know, like, <laughs> I think there's a Taylor Swift song there somewhere, you know, yeah, you know, <laughs> we gotta get we gotta get Tay Tay on the boat. <laughs> she swizzle. Nice, nice. But yeah, so so that you know, I've 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 opened for Frank Santorelli from The Sopranos. Uh, yeah. I opened for yeah. like I don't know, Jared Logan, if you know who that is. I mean, you know, nobody huge. Um, I met uh, Brody Stevens before he died. That was pretty cool. Oh, and that was really sad when he when he died. Um, because it was like, damn, he is. You know, he's gone, man, mm. you know, and, and he went in the, I don't know if you guys know who Brody Stevens is. I don't. But, uh, he He's a great comedian. Uh, I remember he was the comedian. He killed himself a few years ago. Um, and I remember the first time I ever saw him live, um, I was, uh, I went to comedy, uh, I think it was Comedy Central had a tour, this, uh, or no, Funny or Die had a tour. It was a Funny or Die tour and the first year they did like their big it was like a big touring comedy festival the first year they did it the headliners were flight of the concords and dave chappelle who were each just incredible on their own and then they had a bunch of comedians you know they had like two shows on the main stage and i saw this at um god what is it the xfinity center i don't know what it is now is it still the xfinity mm -hmm. center I in boss so. in massachusetts what, mansfield yeah. right yep and uh great woods yeah, Great Woods, Twitter Center, et cetera, <laughs> yeah, et cetera. Yeah, right. And uh, it's had a million names. And yeah. so the big stage had two shows. They had an earlier show that had uh, John Mulaney, Kristen Schaal, was headlined by Hannibal Burris. And then they had the and then they had like the uh, the later show. And the later show uh, was headlined, was the later show was just Flight of the Concords followed by Dave Chappelle and it was mm. just you know uh, just just amazing but before both of those shows on like the side stage mm -hmm. little area that they have there um, they had like a local comic showcase and a lot and I knew pretty much everybody there uh, it was like Dan Crone Will Noonan like you know a lot of like the uh, the usual suspects when it comes to like local Boston you know like oh mm -hmm. local talent yeah. kind of guys you know that you know, and uh, the guys that are going to like open for Marin and open for Bill Burr and shit when they, you know, when those guys come to town. Um, and uh, but Brody Stevens hosted that showcase and he was just I don't, if you've ever seen Brody Stevens and I and I highly recommend you look up some of his shit because he's just he talks like this and he, you know, and and he and, and, he, and he he's makes very loud statements and you know and he's just you know and, and he was just walking around with this this wireless microphone and he was just walking around telling everybody you know and just riffing as he was just walking and he just as he just kept walking he just got like more and more people were just fascinated by what this motherfucker had to say and he, they call it congregated and he goes listen we're gonna start the show in a minute you all need to file in here and he like literally pulled like he, you know, and then I looked around and like he had just built this audience just simply by just I don't even remember a single like joke he made he was just shitting on everything he was just walking around the grounds of the fucking you know of you know the tweeter center just shitting on you know a, a trash can he would see or people wearing specific shirts and then he brought us all in and he just like created this audience and then walked up onto stage and then did his act and started bringing up comedians and he was just amazing nice. And yeah, and uh, yeah, and then he had a show called I think it's called Enjoy It. Uh, it was a Comedy Central like docu series because mm -hmm. he like 
had a full on mental breakdown and they made a whole documentary about him um, and his mental breakdown. And then he kind of like had like a um, return to prominence and, you know, he was like really tight with Zach Galifianakis mm -hmm. and Zach Galifianakis featured very heavy uh, in the docuseries. Um, and so, and the whole thing was about him, like, you know, beating depression and beating, you know, and, and getting yeah. his mental illness under control. And then, mm -hmm. and then for him, like five years later to like go out the way he did, is just, it was, yeah. you know, it was, it was demoralizing. It was definitely like, that sucks that that's the end of his story, man. That mm. absolutely fucking sucks that that is the end of this man's story. Cause you know, it almost seems like it's a. Uh... I mean, it's worse than a slap in the face, but when you think about mental illness and comedians, right? It, yeah. it just doesn't mix to, to most people, but they're human just like everybody else. And they're going to have their own issues. But obviously, you know, when Robin Williams had his thing and, you know, obviously with Brody, it, it, people have a hard time understanding that, that comedians who make people laugh all the time probably have most shit going on and, and, and than a normal yeah. person seems like. Yeah. I had this, uh, this, this, I dated this girl for like two years and we got pretty serious and, you know, she brought me down around her family back, like down in New Jersey, multiple times, and uh, and I had like severe social anxiety. I have severe social anxiety, and she couldn't, she could not wrap her head mm. around the concept. You know, and she's like, you know, I don't understand how you can like go to a room full of strangers, hundreds of people that you don't know, and go on stage and like talk to you know and talk into a microphone and make all these people laugh but like you just get so shy and you just like you know just clamp up you know you just talk mm. like Ugh. you know uh, and it's like well the difference is when i go and visit your fucking family i'm not talking in a microphone to all of these people at once you know yep. and these people have never seen me do stand-up these people don't know that I have a secret superpower, right? Like this is yeah. my friend Jeff used to used to call it this. My friend Jeff Young, a, amazing comedian. Um, you know, he's just like my favorite thing about being in a room full of people who don't know me, and I'm about to go on stage, is that these people don't know that I'm a fucking superhero. These people don't know that I'm fucking Superman, and I'm about to fucking punch a hole into the side of a fucking tank That's and awesome. they don't even and they're not even ready for that and you know and <laughs> and it, it is kind of feel like that but with you know but when i'm down there and i'm at a fucking wedding where i don't know 98 mm percent -hmm. of the people in that room like i'm not gonna be i'm not i'm not gonna showboat you know because right. you know because i about you yeah you're yeah. not performing at the you weren't hired to perform at the wedding yeah. <laughs> and plus the material that i you know that i had in my in my toolbox, I couldn't say in front of her fucking family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was another thing. It's like I also can't do most of my material here, you know. It's a little too clean act. Should she clean act? You know, I can't. I can't uh, talk about how how fucked up there was that was that Casper was about a dead kid. You know. Seriously. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, well, Chrissy, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on today. I must yeah. say. Yeah. Thanks so much. We're honored oh, yeah. to have you. Oh, is this the end of it? Yeah, I well, think. Well, I, you don't miss a beat, do you? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm used to. Here's the thing. I'm used to talking for like, bro. I'm used to talking for like two to three hours. So it's like, oh, this is over. All right. Well, okay, that's cool. a good point. I know. I, I saw always the leave them wanting more. And yeah, I'll yeah. tell you right now, we're gonna want you back on again if you're still interested sure. in, in coming back on at some point. Oh, for sure. Where yeah, we'd like any, to, you know, literally any time. Well, thank also, you. Yeah, we when we were we, hopefully where we. You know, step our game up some more too. Maybe you, and then so when we come back together, you know, it's it's better than the first run. You know, and all that good stuff, vice versa. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah. if you ever have a uh, guest who maybe isn't the most interesting person, you know, you can have me on as well. I'll be like, uh, <laughs> I'll be like the Tim Dillon to your Joe Rogan, right? Fucking Where love it's it. just, you know, <laughs> just like a new ass, <laughs> like a buffer, you know. <laughs> good. All right, we'll hold you to that. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Literally, anytime I'm free, I would, I would do that. I love podcasting. I love, I just love talking, dude. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's just talking. <laughs> oh, you want me to talk? Just say whatever's on my mind for a long great. period of time. Talking is great as long as you have an audience to talk to, right? And so we're trying yeah. to obviously move up and 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 pick up more folks, and that's why we're yeah. having people like you on and and Lil Pete and shit like that. So Lil we'll Pete. continue to grow. <laughs> <laughs> now, Adam, He's like a Adam rapper. He's a rapper Pete. now, Lil Pete. That's right. <laughs> I told him, you call him Lil Pete, Adam, but I like Lil Pete. I like the apostrophe L-I-L. -L. I think that works better. 
Little, yeah. I think Little is funnier, and he Little Pete the White Rapper. That's his new name. Yeah, Little Pete the White Rapper. <laughs> actually, I have a character in my in the book that I wrote <laughs> that I still want to edit uh, and actually try to get published eventually. But I have a character named Little Dave. Uh, his actually, Little Dave. Is and the apostrophe with the with the apostrophe. I, you, I think I think it's funnier with the apostrophe. It's oh, always one hundred percent. No, it, same. <laughs> you and me, same. Yep. Yep. No, absolutely. Everybody uses L I L. I'm trying to be different for once in my life. He's going back to <laughs> well, LAL little. is the more recent one because you know, little is you know, little women, for, you know, that's like the oldest of all time. Everyone expects LIL, <laughs> that's true. Does do they not? Little L I T T L E is like the, the non slang version. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you the non slang version of little Pete. Hello, well, you know what? Let's let's ask Pete what he wants to be called. <laughs> yeah. right? Come on, Pete, I on. he wants to de be defined by his height, though. That's <laughs> yo. What's funny is when I was like, I, I, you know, we work with him and I, I started calling him Little Pete, and he was like, I, I've heard that name all my life, so it wasn't even yeah. like original by me. I, but I Adam was, was so yeah. excited because he thought he had coined him a new <laughs> nickname, so Adam was really, I was really so excited. excited. He said, Well, most people call me Little Pete, but they spell it L I L, you use L I T T L E, so it is funnier. I said, thanks, little Pete. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, on that note, folks, thanks for joining us. We hope you had a great time here. We're hanging with with, with Shushy. Shushy lives again. You can catch Shushy, him on Twitter. Shushy is Twitter alive TV. And well. Yeah, alive so, and well. As you, so guys, my, as you guys can see, my my Twitter handle, my Instagram handle, and and my Twitch URL. It's Shushy lives. That's S H U S H Y. L I V E S. Uh, you can find me at Shushy Lives on Twitter, Instagram, and then twitch.tv slash Shushy Lives. Uh, and that's where you can find uh, just old videos of me playing Smash and my, my podcast, The Film Sims, my podcast, um, America Has Issues, which is on hiatus right now. And, uh, and especially, when is this coming out? I'd say yeah. uh, by next Friday, the latest. Next Friday, okay. So uh, this for, this Saturday, I'm going to try to play Jackbox games on my. Uh, that will be on, interesting how that on. works. I love the concept. The yeah, box. and I'm going to try to do it because I, I know it's going to be kind of like a little bit more technically involved than anything I've done before. Mm -hmm. um, but so if that is a success, then we might do that because God damn, I am just tired of talking about politics every week, man. <laughs> I am so it is. And also we got a lot of like some of my biggest streams ever were before the election. But ever since the election, that category has been a lot more dead. And I think a lot of people are just burnt out, you know, yeah. especially like right now, I feel like we're kind of like in political limbo because every week it's like i don't know guys are these trump lawsuits gonna provide anything and everybody's like probably not and then mm -hmm. the next week it's like so those lawsuits didn't go anywhere are these new lawsuits gonna do anything and they're like right. probably not you know <laughs> and, and then you're stuck in yeah. ground it's like okay time to argue about blm again you know <laughs> like, yeah, let's right. wait till january and see what happens when he, when he barricades himself into the friggin' old office and then we have some news to talk about <laughs> god i i, I kind of can't wait i know that like you know i i, I know that everybody is like hoping Open for a peaceful transfer of power, but I hope, like, dude, uh, pie in the sky wish for for the the transfer is that him just screaming as they just Flailing. drag him, just two guys <laughs> dragging him. Ah! I'm the, I won, you know. I George won this mine. election by a lot, you know. Like, <laughs> <That's right. That's laughs> so you know. Hey, get man, only out. Home. <laughs> yeah, you get the old kick, the old boot, and fucking all Obama's get out. Yeah, yeah. fuck him, man. Seriously. I'm not well, a Joe Biden fan by any means, but just get the fuck out of here, dude. Oh like, yeah, let's just uh, you know, I can get my cousin in there to probably do a better job, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't even have a cousin. <laughs> you know, you can get in right now, and do a better job. So <laughs> awesome. Oh all right, man, thank well, you. Thanks Sush again, Trushy. Thank you, Josh. Until you, next Adam. time, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Yes. We will meet again soon. We will. Stay broken, folks. Yeah. Thank you. Fuck yeah. <laughs>